Welcome to Riley's Gardening Adventures. 70 days ago, I started the Bloom Booster experiment. I want to see what would the effects of growing tomatoes under identical conditions, with the only different factor being fertilizer and PK ratio. As I had been previously using balanced fertilizers before, I was curious to see what would high phosphorus fertilizer would do, as phosphorus helps fruit development, which is what we want from tomatoes. So I asked the question, why not focus on phosphorus? So I set out and did the experiment, and these are my findings. It's time for some data! Alright, so here we are with my data, because what's an experiment without data? So I carefully measured each tomato plant, and I would log down each cluster, bloom, or tomato that I would see in each week and record it for nine weeks. As you can see, Bloom Booster has significantly outpaced every single competitor. The control has done the worst, the balance did the middle, and the Bloom Booster did the best. But what they all have in common is that when it comes to tomatoes, none of them were able to make any tomatoes at all. So it all was dependent on the light source that I had in my room. For the blooms, Bloom Booster, as what the fertilizer advertised, did make the most blooms. I would get so much more clusters to see here, four clusters compared to three for the balance and 18 flowers. So 30% more blooms than the balanced, as well as 30% more clusters. In conclusion, Bloom Booster is objectively better than the balanced and control categories when it comes to making more clusters and more blooms. I was not able to determine tomatoes because of inadequate lighting. Nevertheless, Bloom Booster did the best. Now let's look at the plants. First and foremost, I want to show the control experiment plant. So this tomato is the tomato that had no fertilizer and just used a depleted recycled soil. So for a pre-used soil, it did actually pretty well at first. And I was wondering, hey, maybe I didn't even need fertilizer to grow tomatoes. But as it got bigger, that was not the case. Now, prior to putting this indoors, so you can't say it just got leggy, the stem was always really skinny. Now I just wanted to show you how skinny the stem is. You can see just really tiny. My pinky finger is even thicker than the stem. So that's really not a good sign of healthy plant development. I'm believing because the plant has ran out of nutrients, it stopped growing as well. This plant is much shorter than the other plants and there's just not enough leaves. The flowers, this produced the least amount of flowers and they also fell off. Since this produced even less flowers, it's just more pronounced. So this is the effects of the controlled tomato without any fertilizer. And I want to cover is the one that had the middle results, the balanced fertilizer. So this one has been using Osmocote, which is my 14, 14, 14 NPK ratio. So nothing heavier than any of the macronutrients. I've been using this type of fertilizer for a long time, so I knew what to expect. And before you say, what happened here? Why is there uh, no leaves on this side? I actually dropped the grow light just recently before I was filming, and these leaves just snapped off. So don't think that the plant was so sickly the leaves fell off. It just did that. But as you can see, look at the leaf quality. So it has suffered endema like the other all tomato plants have, but... This one actually suffered the least effects. I also want to show off the stem. So the stem is actually thicker than the controlled one. So the stem is actually a bit thicker than my pinky finger, which is pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the thickest stem that you would want in a tomato plant, but I assume that it didn't get that thick because of the sunlight. But nevertheless, it has done vastly better than the control experiment. Now, the blooms, the blooms are as expected like the control, did not produce any tomatoes. I just do not have the growing capacity with my grow lights to allow the facilitation of tomatoes. So this is the effects of just growing a tomato only with balanced fertilizers, uh, partially outdoors and partially indoors. The tomato I want to cover is the Bloom Booster tomato. So as you've seen in the data, this did have the most blooms. But there is some caveats I want to cover. Now, first and foremost, the leaf growth is different from the rest, especially from the balanced fertilizer. So right in here, it's dark green. Now, you didn't see that with the other leaves, which were a bit lighter green on the balance. Furthermore, the leaves are shorter and more compact in the, like the spacing between each individual leaf. And at the same time, the plant has more susceptible to endema. So I don't know why like this, but uh, that's just how it was like when growing indoors. Now, 
the stem is thicker than all the other stems but it seems to be only like around 30 to 50 percent thicker than the bounce fertilizer so i still think that's a good improvement with the bounce fertilizer now second another thing i want to cover is the soil so this one has remnants of salt so when you're using a bound on um, bloom booster fertilizer it's salt based and I think the remnants just stay on there. When I was growing this outdoors, I didn't have this problem, but when I moved it indoors, I believe that since I wasn't watering as much, the water wasn't able to flush out the excess salt. So this didn't seem to kill the plant or harm it in any way. Um, I've seen people say, oh, too much salt on the soil kills the plant. The tomato did not die from it. So another thing is the flowers, just like the others, did not produce anything. The grow lights I have here are not that good but another thing I want to say is that the plant grew much faster than the controlled of course and but also the balance and it is slightly taller than the balance when it comes to growth speed I think I would say 30 to 20 to 30 percent faster in growth speed so that's the things about the bloom booster tomato in conclusion in comparison to the control and balance fertilizer Bloom Booster had faster growth, more blooms and clusters, darker green and smaller leaves, more susceptibility to edema, and a thicker stem. And my suggestion. Now, the reason is because of the leaf quality. I believe that the leaf quality of the balanced fertilizer and even the controlled is much nicer as it's much bigger and longer. Um, this has darker green, but I think that the wider uh, area of the leaves can capture more sunlight and will result in a better plant. Now, this is where Bloom Booster comes in play. Once the plant, after using a balanced fertilizer for a um, few weeks, when it reaches half the size of the tomato plant you want, so let's say you want six feet and it hits three feet, then switch over to Bloom Booster because you really want to encourage tomato and flower growth, which Bloom Booster is objectively better at. So when it gets to the halfway to the height you want, switch over to Bloom Booster because you will now encourage the flowers you want and it will have better performance than just continuing to use the balanced fertilizer. And thus the added benefit of the balanced fertilizer making bigger leaves than the smaller leaves that this will have. Stay tuned for more adventures on Riley's Gardening Adventures.